Have you ever wondered how we scale Facebook ads in 2022? Well, in today's video, I'll be going through a full guide of how we actually establish numbers to hit targets, KPIs, and things like that. How, what the actual account structure looks like and a few other things for longer term focus to build a better business in that perspective right there. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nick Terrio and I run an e-com growth agency and I make all these videos completely for free to help you guys grow your business to a point where one day you'll want to be able to work with our agency. That being said, uh, we manage roughly around 750k to a million dollars a month and everything on this channel I document um, pretty, pretty transparently in that perspective right there. Make sure before we get started to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and let's dive into the video guys. All right, how to scale Facebook ads in 2022. So I'll be going over just a quick little kind of case study to demo you guys what I'll be breaking down for this. So I want to show you all one of the stores that we're working on. It's the last seven days. We did roughly $57,000 in sales with $9,700 in profit after COG shipping and all that good stuff right there. Now we did do this at a 2.57x ROAS, which every brand is different in terms of what ROAS they need. Some brands we work with need a 4x, some brands we need, we, need, um, we work with need a 2x, some need a 3x. So every brand is different and we will be talking about that in a second. And if you're not familiar with the software we're using, it's called Triple Well. So that's this particular software right here. And we use this for all of our Shopify stores and it's a, a Shopify exclusive. And just to show you the ad account, uh, we did all of this with literally one campaign. I'm gonna show you exactly how all that is structured in a second, but you can see right there, we spent $20,000, um, scaled up to about $2,900 a day in spend uh, with roughly 431 purchases. Now, number one, to be able to do this effectively is you need to know your numbers. You need to figure out what do you need? You need to calculate what CPA do you need to hit. And CPA is basically, if you look at your AOV, you know, let's say for example, you're selling a product for $100 and let's say $20 is COGS and $10 is shipping. Well, $30 of it goes to expenses and $70 of it is profit. And then from there, you need to figure out out of that $70, how much are you willing to spend to acquire a customer? Is it 30 bucks out of that 70, 25 out of that 70, 70 out of that 70, every brand is different. And depending on how quickly you need to be profitable, that will also depend on what CPA you need to hit. So some brands we work with, they're willing to accept the higher CPA at the beginning because they have a really good LTV. So another thing to look at is what's your LTV from a 60 day to 90 day perspective. And also you need to know what's the goal of the business. If you're selling one product, 30 bucks, that's it. You're gonna struggle really hard to scale because you're gonna, you're gonna get a roughly a 20 to $25 CPA, which is not gonna get you the best return on adsmen or profits at the end. So it's important to be able to look at also how to extend that customer you acquired relationship with you through lifetime value. And we'll go to that in a second. So just to show you over for this particular account right here, we could see that the $44 CPA, that's what we were hitting over the last seven days. You can see right here in Triple Well, we had a $44 new customer acquisition CPA. And then we had a $27 blended CPA. And blended just means through everything. Um, whereas this is just focusing on new customer acquisition. Our day one return on ad spend was 1.58. Our day 90 return on ad spend was 1.93. So you can see right here, day, uh, day one is basically just whatever your AOV is, $69 AOV. Our 60 day lifetime value is $80. And our 90 day lifetime value is $85. And our break even CPA is 1.5. So um, as long as we're hitting a 1.5 X, then we're good, we're breaking even. Now, right now for this particular brand, the client is focusing on acquiring as many customers as possible and accepting a lower return on ad spend. The reason behind this is because this is a subscription product. Well, not necessarily a completely a subscription product, people have an option to opt in to a subscription after purchasing and we're converting, I don't know, maybe 40 to 60% of those people into a subscription, not everyone. With that being said, we have a really good retention for people to stay on that subscription. And right now we're just trying to acquire as many subscribers as possible to where eventually one day we can literally just turn off ads if we want it. And they would coast that 100, 300K a month 
with literally zero in ad spend. But obviously that's not the goal because we want to get to a million, $3 million a month. So I just want to put that in perspective right there. Next thing is that you need to know that every single brand has different profit margins plus goals with their business. You know, I've had people come up to me and say, hey, Nick, you know, is a 3x return on ad spend good? I'm like, well, it depends. It depends on your business. It depends on your profit margins. It depends on your goals with the business. If your day one goal is to be as profitable as possible, you're gonna, you can be that. You can purely have that, but you're gonna struggle to scale quickly. It's gonna take you longer in time to scale. But if you wanna scale super aggressively, really, 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 really fast, then you're gonna have to accept lower profit margins, but you can hit that scale faster. Second thing is that every brand has different profit margins. So for example, we have one account with a 4X break even return on ad spend. I have another account with a, like a 3.5X. I have a bunch of accounts with like a 1.5X. It just depends on the business and it depends on the profit margins within each order. And that's really important to understand that. So now that you know your numbers and everything like that, now it's time to actually look at, okay, cool. What is the account structure and what are we going for? So first thing, our account structure is very simple. It's one CBO campaign with a main ad set with all of our winning ads and then two dynamic ad sets at a time to test new ads, okay? Very simple campaign setup. And I know some people that's already gonna ask me is like, all right, do we need multiple CBO campaigns? Well, here is the kind of few different scenarios that we go through, okay? Number one is that we'll do one campaign per country if there's culture and language differences. So we'll have some accounts where we can run the same ads in America, Australia, and New Zealand, and it works perfectly fine. We have some accounts that have different languages. So when they have different languages and you know, we we're, we're really have the creative ability to create specific creatives for that geo location, then we'll split it to different uh, campaigns. So we'll do like USA as one campaign, we'll do Australia as one campaign. So it just depends on your scenario and I recommend testing both. Next thing is if you have very different personas. So let's say if I sell men's, men's clothing and women's clothing, then I'll split our campaigns up into two, one men, one women's clothing. Next thing is that you only focus on the top one to three best selling products. I made this mistake a lot back in my early days. I was working with a clothing brand where they had a hundred different SKUs and you know, the client was trying to get us all over the place to like create campaigns for everything. And now that I've gone through a few years of just working with a lot of businesses and better understanding my ability to where now I tell the client, Hey, this is what we're going to run ads for because this is the most efficient way to grow your business. And we only focus on the one to three best selling products of their business. And then we use all the other products as upsells and retention. We use Facebook purely as a way to acquire customers. And we use the best selling products as like a, you know, a kind of like a, you know, lead page magnet in that perspective right there to get people in. And then we use email, SMS, and organic to use all the other products as upsells and retention side. And the why is this important? Because it's very hard to scale 10 products at once. Like I'm not gonna lie at all. It's a lot easier to scale one product at a time, acquire a shitload of customers, and then use all your other products as upsells and retention. Next thing, just looking at the account level, what the account level looks like. Again, you know, we did one campaign last seven days, 20K in spin. Looking further into the ad set level, you can see right here we have our two main ad sets. The reason why we have two main ad sets is because we've basically filled up the 50 ads in our main one. And then we needed to have a, like you can't have more than 50 ads in an ad set at a time. And we needed another place to start putting ads. And that's where our main two came around. And you can see right here, 137, 136, 145, UGC, 141, UGC 5, and 143 are all dynamic ad sets. Now, another thing to note, we only use broad targeting. We do not use interests, we do not use lookalikes, we do not use retargeting audiences. <laughs> um, we don't use any of that. And we just use broad targeting and this eliminates the question of, is it the audience or is it the ad? We know that if that particular ad doesn't work, it's because of the ad now. Next thing is this puts greater focus on building better ads. With no more question of, is it the ad? or as the audience, we can purely focus just on building better ads that move the business forward. Account simplification as well. Due to this, there's less stuff to manage in the account. And again, it puts us back on focusing building better ads for the account. Next thing, greater scalability. There's no more audience limitations because let's say for example, we're using a specific interest or look like, then all of a sudden what happens is, is that we might run into limiting sizes of those interests or look likes. 
to where we start seeing you know diminishing returns quicker in the accounts next thing is less competition due to there being when you if like everyone's targeting the same interests there's more competition on that specific interest and whether it's profitable or unprofitable either way so we notice that when we go broad we see better cpms which cpms is not a direct correlation to profits i've have some accounts with you know hundred dollar cpms that are super profitable and i have some accounts with an eight dollar cpm and they're unprofitable so it doesn't mean that cpms will make you more profitable but we have seen it play a small effect here and there and we have seen less competition because now we're allowing Facebook to do its job versus telling Facebook to target the same interest as all the other hundred advertisers. Next thing is more stability and performance. When you go broad, you're purely giving the control to Facebook to target who it believes will be your best customer. So due to that, we've seen better stability and performance on a larger scale. Whereas when we scaled up with interest and look likes, we've seen more instabilities in performance on day to day. And then the last thing, is that the ad does the targeting. A lot of y'all believe that the targeting, what you target does the targeting, the ad does the targeting, okay? You just force Facebook to target people when you set your own targeting, whereas when you build an ad, the creative and the emotions in the creative and the, the people in your creative, that all does the targeting to who your ideal customer is. So it's again, puts a lot more focus for you on your creative and your copy versus now where like the old way would be just to set some target up and that like that. So that's why we use broad targeting only. And then just go further. Here's what the dynamic ad ad level looks like. And every dynamic ad set we launch, we launch with a purpose to test a specific variable. So let's say for example, you know, we've been seeing a certain intro works really well. Then we want to further test more intros like that. Um, for a specific type of video. Um, we use the 322 method for dynamic creatives, which is three videos, two copies and two headlines with one headline being a previous best performer and one copy being a previous best formula. Um, shout out to Charlie Disruptor because he's the one that actually um, gave us that idea right there. We've been using it, it's been working really well for us. And what we do is we find winning ads dynamic. And then what we do is we always turn off unprofitable dynamic ad sets. So we never turn off our main ad sets, never. We turn off ads in the main ad sets that are not profitable, but we only turn off um, ad sets at the ad set level for uh, dynamics. So we just basically look for ad sets with large amounts of spin and we turn them off if they're unprofitable. Very simple. Then what we do is we move those winners from our dynamic ad set into one of our main ad sets. Again, you're only gonna have one main ad set. This account we've been working with for about a year now, and we found a lot of winners. We filled up one ad set, then we had to move to a second ad set because we had over 50 ads in there. And some of those ads from the original main ad set still work really well, so owners weren't really thinking it on. And what we do, we move those winners over and we turn them into ads. So I'll show you in a second of how exactly we do that, but I do wanna talk about what is a winner. That's a big question I get a lot. I see some people, they get one purchase with a five extra rest, they get to a winning ad. Whereas I would like to see 10 purchases at a three extra rest, that's a winning ad to me. So what you like to do is first off, um, you know, uh, also you wanna leave your dynamic ads on until your winning ads and your main ad sets are taken off. Now, what defines a winning ad? That's the big question right here because everyone has a different perspective on it. For us, we're looking for dynamic ad sets with a large amount of spin. So if you look like right here at 137 right here, it spent a large amount of spin relative to these two main ad sets. Even look at 145. So I clarify these two as winners, 137, 145. UGC, even though it has a good cost um, return on ad spin, I don't count that as a good winner yet because it still hasn't spent a large amount of ad spin. And that's okay if something doesn't spin a lot. Cause you can see right here, like one, you know, UGC five right here. It's okay if something doesn't spin a lot because what that does is it's Facebook telling us that, Hey, they haven't identified any strong winners in this and they don't want to spend on it because of that. So if a dynamic ad set's not getting a lot of spin, it's not that it's Facebook's fucking up. It's that your ads suck. Just be straight up with you on that. So you need to build better ads. And if you keep building ad sets and Facebook doesn't spin on it, it's because you have a major problem in your creative and your messaging process. Now, if you wanna know an exact step-by-step -step walkthrough 
of how exactly we move ad sets, create the, you know, create the dynamic ad sets, move winners into our main campaign. I do have a video called how to run dynamic creatives on Facebook, where I literally walk you through an ad account and show you all of this step by step. But I do want to talk about some other stuff in here too. So that's why I don't want to make that in this video. Next thing is account structure. So retargeting, we do not do any retargeting. Um, few reasons why one, is that if you think you need to do retargeting to have multiple messages to hit people, to convey people through that sales process, then just build better ads to take people through that full sales process in one ad. Very simple, you know, show off handling objections, show off social proof, all in one ad, and that's gonna better convince people. Next thing is that if you do believe that, I've audited a lot of product pages where people believe they need this very complex retargeting campaign, and their product page doesn't even have a single review on it or single thing on social proof on it. So build a better product page that handles those objections and handles that adding that social, social proof and all that good stuff right there. Next thing is that iOS 14.5 severely limited retargeting audience size. So before you could have, you know, with certainty that you could exclude website visitors 30 days from website visitors 180 days. But now you don't have that certainty anymore. And you, due to people being out of tracking, so we have smaller custom audience sizes and you don't even have the certainty that you're excluding those people correctly. And lastly is now all of our focus goes on ads that grow the business versus ads that rely on ads that grow the business to make money. So for retargeting to work really well, you have to have really solid um, prospecting ads or top of funnel ads. So now you just put your, all your focus on one style of ads to make the most money. Um, and also another thing to even add on this, Facebook does retargeting for you auto automatically. If you go in your Facebook ad account and you look at the frequency tab and you look at like say last seven days, for example, and you look at the frequency, if it's over 1.00, you are retargeting people. And that sense right there. Next thing, spin rules. So this is where it goes back down to more of the scaling side of Facebook. And the first thing we like to look at is um, new customer acquisition at or below target last three days. So for example, if I'm looking at triple right here, new customer acquisition, we're at $44 um, for a CPA on that perspective right there. So if our, you know, acquisition cost is $44, then cool. We're at it right now or, or below or we're at it. We can scale by 20%. If we were above that, so let's say, for example, if we're at $50, then we would literally just decrease spend by 20%. So it's either increased by 20% or decreased by 20%. Very simple. That's all we do. That's how we scale Facebook ads. That's literally how we took this account from $100 a day to $3,000 a day. Very easy to do. Now, something I want to show you guys is that this thing called sales velocity. And to show you guys that as you increase ad spend, the higher your CPA will be. So this is the account at $3,000 a day. We had a $44 CPA. And here's the account at $1,600 a day at $39 CPA. Every account will have a different point of diminishing returns. So, you know, this one wasn't like we doubled spend and only saw a $5 increase in CPA. Whereas some accounts, if you took this to, you know, $3,000 a day, you might have seen $70 CPA. Every account is different. So you, it's, it's up to you to understand the account and understand that what that CPA is. And also to understand that diminishing returns is different for every account. I've seen accounts that go from $100 a day to $300 a day and see, you know, double the CPA as well. So it just depends. Every account is different. And it's good to understand this because there's a few different things to look at. So obviously if we know CPA will increase, then there's a few things we can do to, to be able to spend more and accept the higher CPA. First thing is just being able to increase AOV, add some bundles, add some upsells on the website. And can you increase AOV? AOV is really big because let's say, for example, if you need a $20 CPA with a $60 AOV, that's a three extra S. And then all of a sudden you go from a 60 to $80 AOV. Now with a $20 CPA, you're getting a four extra S. So you're getting a better, you know, return on ad spend that perspective right there. Next thing is that if you decrease CPA by building better creative size messaging. So we tested about 200 ads on this account and we're finding that 44 to 39 dollars cpa is average on this account so so we're still testing new stuff every week but we kind of know where what cpa we average for this account so it will be different for everyone people who are just starting out with facebook ads you're going to test a lot more creative and copy to really see what's kind of your average cpa over a year time next thing is simply just build a better product you know if 
you look at the market and you see people who want an iPhone 4 right now in 2022, it's going to be substantially smaller. So it's going to be hard to spend a lot of money advertising iPhone 4. Whereas if you see, you know, say for example, iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 market is very large. There's a lot more people that want an iPhone 13 in 2022, and you can spend significantly more marketing to that audience because there's a bigger market size. So build a better product. Um, that's probably one of the easiest ones. And then increase CVR to decrease CPA. So build a better product page that has a higher conversion rate. You know, I've seen people go from a 2% to 4% conversion rate and literally double their sales overnight. And lastly, increase LTV. So again, as we go back up here, we're, um, we're currently doing all of these things for this account, but LTV is the biggest one that plays the biggest impact. And you can see right here, our AOV is $69 and our 90 day LTV is $85. That allows us to have, all, you know, all, uh, see a higher CPA for this account and, you know, get a good return on ad spend as well. Um, if we weren't offering a subscription on this product, like, and just had a $69 AOV, we definitely would have to have a lower CPA to be profitable with this business. So a few ways to increase the LTV subscriptions. If you have a product that, you know, people have to repurchase every 30 to 60 days, subscriptions work really well. Offering new products that just continuing to, to fit your customer avatar. So this comes down to a lot of, lot of studying and researching your customer avatar and figure out what are other products they want in their life. Okay. We'll look at Apple. Apple has an incredible LTV with me. I bought an iPhone 4 with it from them, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I bought a MacBook. I bought, you know, um, some of these like keyboards and stuff like that from them. Um, headphones. Like I bought a lot of stuff from them because everything fits into my lifestyle. Uh, look at like Fashion Nova, for example. Fashion Nova started off with just women's clothing, you know, created a lot of different pieces, increased that LTV. Then they launched men's division because they realized that a lot of those you know girls are buying had husbands and boyfriends so hey let's get all these girls to buy you know clothes for their guy and that's what they did they launched the men's line a few years later they launched fashion over kids because they knew that they were also gonna have kids so their ltv per customer they've acquired is substantially really 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 high relative to a lot of these other clothing brands so it's extremely important to focus your ltv and this is the long-term focus of the business. Um, and when I say long-term focus, I don't mean you put this off for a year. I say focus on it now with the ability of how am I going to keep this customer in my pipeline for the next 10 years. If right now you could only have your customers you've acquired, you can't run ads anymore, and you have to make your money with those customers you have now, how would you do it? And that's what you really need to focus on. Because that's how you're going to build a long-term business that's, that's going to stay around for years to come. And you're going to make substantially more money than just a quick little store. Then you'll, you'll, you make a few profit on the um, first order. Well, guys, I really hope you all enjoyed this video going over how we scale Facebook ads in 2022. Uh, my apologies. I am a little sick, so I'm sure you've caught that on. My energy is a little bit lower, but, uh, you know, got to get those videos out and want to provide some value for you guys. So really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you're an e-com business owner and doing at least 50k to 100k a month in revenue, um, we scale brands from six figures a month to seven figures a month in profits. I uh, would love to help you out. Um, simply click the link below to book a call with me and my team. We'll hop on a strategy call together. And what we'll do is we'll give you that strategy. You can take it and run with it. Or you have the option to work with us if we think you're a good fit for the agency. Now, if you're not doing any of those type of numbers, but still want some value from me, keep following the channel because I give everything completely transparent away. I don't have anything to sell you other course or anything like that for you guys. The way I make my money is by helping you guys grow your business. And then eventually you're going to get so tired of doing this yourself. You're going to want to work with me. And that's very simple. So thank you all again for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. My name is Nick Terrio. Peace out.